Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we've got a, uh, a battle here in the Georgia. It's been a while since I've been in the Georgia um, on video just due to the fact that I haven't had very many good games in it lately. I've uh, been getting smashed quite a bit. Every, it seems like every time I make a, a, a move that's even slightly risky, my Georgia is just blapped out of existence. Basically like Thanos comes in and snaps me away. It's just the way it goes. And sometimes it, it's, it, it just, I don't know, <clears throat> it does be like that sometimes. No matter what ship you're in. It just, I don't know, for me it, it rotates. It's like, it's like my, my ships all are on like a carousel. Okay, I like to play a little bit of everything. You guys know that. I'll play all of the different ships, all of the different classes. I prefer to play battleships, obviously, because you guys love to see battleships and I love to play them. Um, but I like to play all of the different battleships, not just American battleships. I play the, the Japanese, the German, uh, very rarely, but I do play them. Uh, the Russians, I play, you know, all of them. Italians, eh, not so much, but yeah. I play all of them. And, uh... I come back around to the Georgia because I haven't gotten a good video in it in a while. And I really do want to get a video in it. Because when the Georgia is on, it's on. And it can be nasty. But uh, the problem with the Georgia is the same problem with the Gneisno, Okay, While the Georgia is much more accurate than the Gneisno on average, uh, it still has the same issue with the Gneisno In that you're only firing four shells over the bow. You're not going broadside all the time to try to get all six guns to bear. Because if you do, you're going to get blapped. So, you end up just shooting your front guns more often than not. And when RNG trolls you, it is absolutely abysmal to play this thing. Um, now, the good thing about the Georgia, it, it is fast. So, you've got that going for you. Which allows you to get stuck in in positions that normally battleships would not be able to. Um, but... We're going to do that, and just to put it into perspective, the, the battleship that's next to me is the Kansas. Um, and this Kansas is going to be with me for the entirety of the match. The Balti, on the other hand, not so much. He's going to overextend and get himself into trouble. The rest of our team, they're not going to do much of anything. Uh, but you see, we get a first shot out on the uh, enemy Georgia, and we get rewarded with a Citadel. 23,000 damage right off the bat. That's nasty. Um, so you, you can see... We're going to get a game where the, the ship actually behaves, which is nice. And so, I'm not going to push any further forward than this gap here on this map. Because this gap allows me to get into the cap and and at least start to, to try to cap. It also allows me to get crossfires and it allows me to protect myself from the left side of the map. It really is like the best case scenario for a big battleship. Um... So we're going to get into this position, we're going to go bow in, and we're going to make sure that we're, uh, we're taking what the enemy gives us. I do apologize if I sniffle and, and cough a little bit, I do apologize. I am still recovering from being sick. I'm, I'm still nowhere near 100%. But uh, you can see, got a, two Georges out here. One of them's kind of angled towards us, one of them is angled away from us slightly. I'm going for that guy because obviously he's the one that's more likely to get blapped. Look at that shot. That looks pretty solid, too. It looks real solid. And, uh, we land three out of the four shells, which is perfect. I mean, that's darn near perfect accuracy, even if we didn't get, you know, the damage we were hoping. But you can see, I am pulling up into this, this cap here, which is going to start forcing the enemy to, A, pay attention to us, and B, what the heck are you doing, bud? All right, so this Kansas is about to make a huge mistake. And this is where you have to read the map, guys. You have to. You know that 90% of the enemy ships are right off to the left side. Why are you putting yourself in position to be focused by everybody? That doesn't make any sense. Especially in a Kansas. But it doesn't make any sense to just keep sailing out into the middle of it. You're not. The, it's only going to end one way, and that is with your quick like removal from the map. Now, fortunately, the Kansas recognizes that he made a, a big mistake, and he starts to reverse. And I guess he's running propulsion mod, because he doesn't sit out there for that long. He ends up getting behind the island, and uh, me and him are going to hold this for a long time. Uh, I don't know how effective this guy is in this match, but I know I'm going to end up having a pretty, pretty nasty game. As we get, th once again, three out of the four shells to hit that broadside Georgia. 
Um, we're at 50,000 damage right now, which isn't the greatest considering we're almost five minutes into the match and we've had a lot of broadsides to shoot at, but it's, it's not bad either. If I was into Kansas, every time I pull my trigger here, it is, you know, six shells going to the target instead of four. That's, that's literally a four, full broadside. So that's why a lot of people, when they talk about, uh, the, the Georgia having a higher AP damage and all of that, I do, it's kind of meh, because at the same time, you got to think that it has, you know, three less guns than any other of the American battleships and actually has less than that for the, um, the, the Kansas right there. So that's why I'm like, eh, you know, it is what it is. It doesn't actually, the only ship that you get an overmatch advantage on over, say, the Iowa or the Kansas is an Edinburgh. That's it. There's one ship. One ship that you get an advantage for having 18-inch guns. Okay, that's it. And I know a lot of people are like, well, Spartan, if you put your jarred on, you then overmatch. No, that's not how overmatch works, Sunshine. All right, so overmatching we've talked about many, many, many times. But overmatching is taking the gun caliber. So in this case, it would be 457 millimeter guns. And you divide that by 14.3. And that tells you that you can uh, overmatch up to it's 31.7 i believe if i'm going by memory the reason i say that it's like up to 31.7 is it's just enough to be under that 32 millimeter bow plating okay war gaming does this on purpose that means that the only people that get to overmatch the 32 millimeter bow plating is yami and eventually the uh the what do you call it musashi and uh, Shikishima, if it ever comes to console, which I hope not. But, uh, yeah. Those will be the only ones that we know of. Okay? Uh, because you need at least the 461 millimeter guns, or 460 millimeter guns that the, uh, the Yami has, which is 18.1 uh, inch guns. So, anyway, you can see the guys that came from the right side of the map, they're coming all the way behind me, and they are now trying to push up the left side. But it's a lot of cruisers in one battleship. And while we're trying to protect our flank from all of the people that they're letting through, these guys are going to be getting themselves killed. York just got dev struck. Uh, the Balti's still over there doing something. But again, it comes down to not necessarily pushing out into the enemy. Let them come to you. If they want to come out of their, their little spot, you're, when you push out, you just get focused by everybody. Um, on this map in particular. We have the outside ring capped, so we have the points advantage right now as we blap that Georgia as he comes around the corner. He was definitely not expecting that, I guarantee it. But uh, you can see that we're going to be getting pushed. This Kansas and I are in a lot of trouble. Uh, there's a Mogami all the way out on the border who's actually doing his job. He's trying to hold that side as much as he can, and I commend him. Maybe you look at him and you go, well, Spartan, why is he so far away? He's so far away because he's got the entire enemy team pushing on him. We sent half our team all the way back around the map just to get to a point where they're bow into a battleship getting their butts kicked. Like, I don't understand it, but it is what it is. And maybe you could look at that and say, well, Spartan, maybe you should have changed what you did here instead of just getting stuck in and trying to prevent the, the enemy from coming all the way around. And maybe you're right. Maybe if I if I recognize that the team is doing that and I, I follow them in, maybe, maybe I'm able to help them out. And you can see front guns can't quite clear the island. I can't back up anymore. Balti is on his own. Now, Balti can bow tank the Jean Bart and sit there and beat him up with HE if he wants. But he doesn't bow tank the Jean Bart. He goes broadside to the Jean Bart and tries to get his broadside. And uh, that's going to end up with the Jean Bart being removed somehow. So you love to see that, but it's also going to end up with the Balti getting removed. So they end up trading, and I don't have a problem with that, but when you're in a ship that has a 27mm bow and you're up against 15-inch battleship, just back off, keep your bow at him, and burn him to the ground. You have the DPM advantage. There's no reason to trade there. Like, that's best case scenario. But it's not what happens. As we reach out and we smash that Albemarle who was getting way too cocky. And uh, you can see we're at 118,000. We're still fighting. I am not going to give up. We've got a good position. There's only one ship behind us now, and it's a cruiser, which I am not that that, that worried about. But we have an Amagi and a Georgia willing each other, just like me and this 
Kansas. Problem solved, sir. Have been doing for the entirety of the match, basically. And you can see I am reversing, trying to get a, a sight line on whatever cruiser it is behind us to see if I can maybe finish him with the rear guns. Um, but yeah. These guys, unfortunately, now they know they have the advantage. There's only three of us left. Uh, they are going to just go straight in and get themselves uh, the base. And there's nothing we can really do about it because I only fire every 25 seconds. There's where we start getting some really bad RNG. Uh, but Kansas takes a shot at him as well, gets a couple of hits. And, uh, yeah. Like I said, I'm not sure exactly how much damage the Kansas ends up with in this one. But I, I do wish that he, he had done a little bit more damage. Because I feel like we've, we've done our own. And I feel like he's been a little bit uh, lacking in his damage. But you can see we finally finish off the Georgia. That's huge. That's going to keep the uh, Amagi from being willed to rebuild when we get him down. But that's then you see the Georgia from the left pushing over. This Kansas is uh, reversing again, which is fine. He's sitting here full broadside to an Amagi at 7.3. And that's a battle with RNG that he just should not be taking. Um, Kansas, very easy to sit it up. Very easy to sit it up. George is going to come around. He's angled. I take the front guns at him because I know the rear gun probably can't hit him. And then I take the rear gun at him. We get our high cow. We are on fire. Uh, you can see we had a pretty solid shell or showing right there. We hit four out of six shells. That's that's a solid showing for the Georgia. So again, not going to argue that. We're up to 145,000 damage. And the Georgia is also going to have the Helena, I believe. Or no, Cleveland. Cleveland's going to come out behind him. And I get absolutely robbed here. And this Cleveland should die in this salvo. Look at where I shoot. I shoot just above waterline because I don't want him to fall short. We hit almost every one of those shells. Oh, well, it says we only hit three of them. But they all overpinned at the angled Cleveland. Now, unfortunately, we just lost our will to rebuild because the, the Kansas goes down. Surprise, surprise. I mean, he was sitting broadside to an Amagi, and so it, it was going to happen. Um, but either way, we take another shot at the Kansas. This time, the Kansas turns out slightly, and these shells all go to the left. And, uh, yeah, that's unfortunate. But, uh, yeah, that was just a little adjustment to his course caused me to miss that shot completely, which is real frustrating. But we do have pretty decent reload on our guns and I want to get rid of the DPM because I have a plan for the battleships and so we go for the shot just before he gets behind the island and wait for it we got him <laughs> now here the goal is to ram the Georgia and shoot the Amagi the Amagi is basically broadside to us. This is an easy Citadel. I'm hoping I get loaded in time, but the Georgia speeds up, and he's actually going to ram me before I get a chance to, to shoot this Amagi, which is really unfortunate. Um, now, this is part of where you could probably argue that the Mogami maybe took himself too far out for too long. And again, you could probably argue the same thing about me being here. I maybe sat here too long, but we always were shooting our guns. We were always doing damage, and... 188,000 damage in a game should at least make it close. And you can see it was actually a close match. Uh, if we got a little bit more support out of the Kansas, I think we could have won this match easily. Um, if he hadn't died when he, did, when he did, there's a good chance that we end up winning this match. So um, it is what it is. It's one of those games where you not necessarily are guaranteed to lose it. But it's real hard based on what your team does. And again, this is one of those where I have to say, like, you saw how long this Mo... Or it's a Suja. I thought it was a Mogami, but this Suja, I know it was a Japanese cruiser. The Suja survived the push from the enemy ships. And assuming he has been firing his guns the entire time, is having himself a heck of a game. And so he was out there by himself fighting the entirety of the enemy push with us, the Kansas and my, and if he survived, they could have survived. And if they had survived and tried to hold that side, we are likely the winners in this match because they wouldn't have been able to push through the base on us and we would have been able to easily win this match, in my opinion. But alas, that is not the case. And uh, while the Suja ended up... Uh, trying to make something happen here and I actually thought he dang near pulled this off like he actually almost got this uh it's it's kind of crazy to be honest 
But uh, he drops these torpedoes out here. The cruiser gets himself spotted. The cruiser, I don't think, has that much health. He doesn't fire his guns initially, which is wrong. He should be able to... Hit, he should be shooting that freaking cruiser, but he doesn't. He shoots the battleship, and then he gets finished. But, uh, yeah, he definitely could have played that a little bit better there at the end. But he, he, he did a pretty good job. And you can see he gets second on the team. We are the only two high cows on our team. And the Kansas is nowhere near. Like, he's, he's halfway down the leaderboard. He's below the Balti, even. And the Balti only ended up killing the freaking uh, Jean Bart. So, yeah, definitely not the best teams in the world. But I wanted to showcase this game just solely due to the fact that you can sometimes get stuck in and end up pulling a game that would have been an absolute raffle stomp back from the brink and almost pull it off. And uh, maybe if I was a better player, maybe we do pull that off. So let me know what you guys think. And if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, I will see you in the next video.